realized I should um, probably comment a bit on the attitude I have towards education. Um, some people here on YouTube, over at Twitter, uh, have definitely pointed out that I seem rather uh, quick to anger on the subject, and I that's that's not an inaccurate description of me. That's definitely true. Um, and since I'm figuring out what to uh, do about the whole YouTube situation, uh, it, is, it basically serves as something to get my mind off of it. Um, that and I'm sort of a mess in here right now because redoing the whole network it's fun I don't like networking ran like 200 feet of ethernet cable not happy about it but um, to cover the entirety of why I don't like school it uh there's going to be a lot to that. So this is going to be broken up into multiple parts um, to make it you know, more easily digestible, but also um, easier to upload. The internet speeds here aren't great. Uh, working on it, but they're not great. Uh, so it'd be better to upload those in chunks. Uh, it makes it easier for me to edit too, but... Also, because YouTube doesn't seem to get it, um, it does sort of game their uh, their stats. Uh, it's always a thing when you do metrics. You can you can game anything. Uh, granted, that's obviously not my intention. I, I've knowingly put out videos that can be up for weeks and have less than 10 views and I'm okay with that. Uh, by no means my intention to uh, deliberately game stuff because then you'd see me do uh, you know regular regular call out pieces stuff like that. I, I'll out call out somebody who directly criticizes me but I'm, I'm not going to do random call out videos or anything like that. Uh, you know, I can cover scientific literature by covering the actual literature and not by, like, calling out somebody who's wrong about it. Stuff like that. But, yeah. I guess, um... Start with the introduction to college. I, I, I won't. Um, if I get into anything from high school specifically, it, it'll be after. Uh, but get in, get into the college stuff. Uh, when I first went off, it was to get a psychology degree. Because at the time, I thought psychology was a brilliant field. I uh, find people very interesting. Uh, I've always found people very interesting. And, um... I think that might have to do a little bit with, uh... It, it sort, of, sort of came up in the when I was filling out the Stack Overflow survey. I am on the autism spectrum. Fairly, fairly high up. Uh, a bit more than just Asperger's would be. Um but not full-blown. It's still fairly high-functioning, but... Uh, we, people can pick up on it a fair bit. I can still hold down a conversation and stuff, but there's things that people definitely pick up on. Uh, tendencies to walk away mid-conversation. Uh, a lot of trouble making eye contact, although uh, I literally just view that as a... Just a uh, or, or predators. We don't like to think about it that way, but um, the single biggest indicator of that is our eyes are in the front of our face, not facing off to the side. That's the 
Predator's physiology is like my dog here is a great example eyes are oriented the same way as ours I can dig up research for that if anybody's interested but that's been shown Predator's eyes are reliably front facing um, so I, I'll, I'll disagree with that one until the, until the day I die but uh there's other, there's plenty of other things, and um, I think it's sort of this back, uh, back, looking back, I think it was sort of this backwards uh, approach to, uh, to trying to get people better because I, I definitely, uh, not, not good at that by any means. Um, eventually figured out how to deal with things. Rather than um, I don't like it when people bring up things like that as a way, uh, some bullshit claim that people should make special accommodations for them. Um, I'll go into more depth about that at another time. But uh, yeah, so psychology. Um, my grades out of high school were uh, meh. I didn't really like to do the homework. I fucking hate homework, actually. Um, my test grades were great, though. And they were high enough that I was able to get into the um, not like an advanced placement in college because they don't really have that, but sort of like a specialized fast track thing. Uh, essentially, if I stayed with the program, I would complete the degree within three years rather than four years. Um, Sort of like these opt-out tests things uh, to speed through it a bit quicker. That's cool. Um, sort of glad it that that happened because I got to see a bit of the realities of things quicker. Uh, you know, ultimately waste less money than uh, had I learned a bit slower, you know. Um, actually, I'm going to cover some of the more, not, not, spe not the specifics of school itself yet. Uh, I'll wait, I'll wait for the, the follow-up to this. What I want, what I, I definitely want to cover, um, at least right now, uh, some of the attitudes that were held about different parts of who I am and what I've done and what skills I had that I have only ever encountered in school, uh, in college specifically. The things that I have hadn't encountered in uh, elementary or high, middle school or high school, uh, things that I've never encountered in the workplace, and, um, yeah, really anywhere else. The, the, the attitudes that I'd only encountered in college that I, I would think these people should know better. I, uh, I'm supposed to be people of reason and critical thinking, not, not, not the kind of shit that I, I, I witnessed. Um, that's the question then is which do I want to do first? Well, 
Now this is over when we go programming channel, so just get that one out of the way real quick. Uh, attitude towards somebody who programs, like, what they freaking do. Same as anybody who's interested in biology or anything else, like, just another student, like, that's your field, that's okay. Literally nothing to comment on there. Um... When people would find out I sew, that was one of the, that was one of the starts of things being interesting, um, quite interesting. So the other students, the ones who didn't stick around, the ones who left not because their grades were bad or anything like that, but just because they clearly wanted to pursue different avenues in life, they were totally fine with it. Like, cool, that's good. That's, you know, nice to see that you know how to do something for yourself. That was the end of it. That's it. Which I'm totally okay with. I don't want to be glorified for it or anything. It's literally just a skill. It's something I know how to happen to know how to do. I also know how to ha happen to know how to cut wood and fix some basic stuff with my car. Not, I'm not great with cars, but some basic stuff. It's just a skill. Don't make it something it's not. But these people did. Um, that quickly got turned into how uh, it definitely meant that I was gay. Which I'm not. I've never even been remotely sexually attracted to a man. I have no problem with people who do. My best friend in college was a bisexual guy who overwhelmingly preferred dudes. I have no problem with that. Just like anybody's specific fetish, what you're into genital-wise is just what you're into. You can't really have a discussion about that because it's... It's the same kind of thing with, like, what what you think tastes good. That's just what you like. That's the end of it. But it was this weird thing with a lot of them, where the fact that I sew meant I must be gay. I mean, it is bizarre thinking, and. Essentially, a sort of uh, stereotyping going on. You know, there's the, the the stereotype usually goes that a gay person probably very into fashion, and so there's a good chance you could she would sew. The thinking here is sort of the opposite, but uh, it, it still definitely fits with the stereotype that because he sews, he's probably into fashion and is probably gay. Meanwhile, I, I dress like trailer trash most of the time. I have no problem admitting that. Uh, dress up for work or whatever, but the overwhelming majority of the time I'm dressed like I am now. I have no problem going out in public like this. Like, that's... And a crap ton of ties right back there, but... Like... That's how I dress most of the time. I'm not into fashion. I'm not. But it got more bizarre than that. And if I would try to explain that, like, I'm not gay, why, why, are, why are you coming to this conclusion? It would quickly turn into one of two things. Either I was in denial about it, and that society had, uh, you know, just enforced down on me that being gay was bad, and that I was just in denial about how I was gay. It, it, like... What? Fucking, what What line of, of justification do you have for something that, like, like that? It, it, it seems completely absurd. Meanwhile, every gay person or bisexual person I have ever met up to that point had not even remotely fit the stereotype of the gay guy. Not a single one of them knew how to sew. 
a single one of them was very into fashion or, uh, you know, had great interior design skills or any of the other bullshit that's claimed. Older now, and uh, let's just say stereotypes exist for a reason, but do keep in mind they're not super reliable. Okay, like a lot of embellishments and other shit people do to them. But uh, the other thing, the other thing I would say uh, when I uh, would ask them why, why they were coming to that kind of conclusion or that trying to assert that I'm not gay, what the, what the hell are you talking about? Um, It would go off on me on how I was uh, homophobic or things like that, which I, I, I literally could not care less. I care about somebody's sexual orientation as much as I care about their their uh, culinary preferences, because as far as I'm concerned, it's the same thing. I don't give a shit. I don't want anybody to give a shit about my preferences either. It's just what I like. The idea that me sewing and being straight makes me homophobic. I, I thought these were supposed to be critical thinkers. People who highly valued evidence and the scientific method. The analytical method, different approaches to determining uh, the likelihood of something being factual. They got my ideas on on this, and uh, I'm ultimately not certain. I'll flat out say that I, I'm not certain about exactly what 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 the hell was going on there, but. Um, I think I was witnessing the start of what we now basically know as the uh, social justice warrior movement. Like I said, I I don't have any hardcore uh, concrete proof of that. That's literally just my feeling. Uh, regardless... The, the definite thing uh, was that I didn't think like these people, at least in regard to that. Uh, but this kind of stuff didn't, didn't stop there. The other uh, blatant case of stereotyping that I would see... Um, I'm from a very rural area. Uh, I, I, I've, e even though it's very small and it would be easy to find me, I really don't have any problem with people knowing where I'm from. Um, partially because, in all reality, I don't really expect anything to happen. Uh, partially because I am in such a rural area that who the hell's really going to travel out here anyways? And partially because... Uh, I live where there's stand your ground laws, and I also live where there's a few rather large animals, and I've bought off a few of those because I'm a avid hiker, and these kinds of things have to wind up happening. I'm a lot more afraid of, say, a uh, bobcat or an angry black bear. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, to be fair, but uh, the a lot more afraid of those than I am of some pissed off person for whatever fucking reason. You know? Um, but I'm from a really rural, rural area, and when they would learn about this, uh, the immediate assumptions, assumptions, so we're going to cover a few of these, was that I absolutely must be of lower intelligence. Um, let's 
Something I see in movies a lot as well, and I really don't like watching movies for that reason. The best business school in the country, by most metrics, Clarkson University, is not too far from here, and I actually worked there, not employed by them, but uh, worked at the facility, like, still staff card and everything, just not, they weren't my employer. Um, so they're, they're close. For me to have been working there, they're close. And, um, yeah. Are also a great engineering school. Um, they're not one of the big names because it is a smaller school, but, uh, you know, St. Lawrence University is another big name in colleges in this country, and, uh, they're not far from here either. In fact, uh, St. Lawrence University is one town over from where Clarkson University is located. Um, similarly, and I, I've tried to dig up research through this. Um, you know, Wiley Online's library, uh, Google Scholar, Semantic Scholar, um, plenty of other, uh, of other uh, either databases or search tools for research. I've tried to find evidence, and may maybe somebody has it, but on any type of, even if it's just correlation, any type of uh, data on intelligence levels and uh, uh, region of habitat, there doesn't seem to be anything. Which is unsurprising. This should sound like an obviously... Uh, prejudicial attitude to have that somebody who lives in a specific area it would be of less in, a lesser intelligence. Something you would, I, at least I thought going in there that that collegiate pound people should know better. But they were the only ones I've ever encountered in my life that were like that. Well, them and, for that specific thing, the lesser intelligence thing, them and um, Hollywood. Another one. Well, that must be pretty lawless. Uh, pretty reckless, sort of fuck the police attitude, uh, similar similar stuff like that. Um, this is something that's going to vary immensely because it's largely a political view. Uh, but the attitude around here, uh, for the most part, again, not entirely, tons of different attitudes. Tons. Of different attitudes, but around here the attitude is generally just that police aren't always necessary. It's better to have them. But there's a lot of things that people can handle better themselves. Bring the police in when it's a bigger problem. That should sound okay to most people. Should also not sound like total lawlessness to most people. Another college around here that uh, quite a lot of criminal justice people come out of. They'll then go move throughout the entire country. Uh, a lot of more border patrol, but uh, there's cops and the like as well. Uh, like a, a disproportionate amount, way more uh, per capita than you would expect, way more per capita than the, the national average. Hardly what I would consider lawless. To go on with that, and this is, again, something I can gather stats for if anybody really wants to see it. Um, uh, because I don't have the stats right in front of me, I'm going to refrain from giving an exact number. But the uh, the crime rate in this area, 
So that is, it's usually measured uh, the, the amount of crime per thousand people in an area. Uh, the crime rate here is considerably lower than the national average. Again, something that would contribute, uh, something that definitely is not anti-law. And um, so this wound up being yet another thing that I had looked into. And um, this was something that the more I looked into it, the more I realized that uh, it tends to be cities that have the bigger crime problem. And, of course, the immediate cop-out to that was that, oh, well, there's more people in cities, so of course there's going to be more crime in cities. But that's not the same thing as the crime rate being higher. Because remember, we're talking about a, the instance of a crime per a thousand people. So if you have, say, one murder in a town of a thousand people every year, that's one in a thousand. If you have ten murders in a town of ten thousand people every year, that's still a rate of one in a thousand. You have a hundred murders in a town of a hundred thousand people. That's still a rate of a hundred, one in a thousand. This continues on. For the rate to be higher, that means instead of the hundred murders in a town of a hundred thousand people, you might be looking at something like a hundred and fifty murders in a town of a hundred thousand people. If you then scale that back down to the lower population, you're now looking at 15 murders in a town of uh, 1,000, uh, sorry, 10, 15 murders in a town of 10,000 people, or one and a half murders per year, so one one year and two the other year, in a town of 1,000 people. An increase in rate cannot just be dismissed away by a larger population count. Those stats can easily be gotten from the uh, Department of Justice, the United States Department of Justice, uh, or any of the specific states' departments of justices. Uh, they will not necessarily be uh, that way across the board. It's going to depend on a lot of specific factors. Um, the federal ones, at least the last time I've checked, which was 2015, were that way. But also, it wasn't very strongly that way. Um, I'd be curious to see the actual uh, calculation of statistical significance and see how, whether it was even within statistical significance or if it wasn't how or, uh, sorry, if it was statistical significant, and if, uh, if it was, how, mm, how much it was. Uh, another thing was when the whole, oh, you must be a racist card got pulled. Literally know nothing about me, nothing about my beliefs or anything else like that. Just immediately, you're from a rural area, you must be a racist. I was always fun to defend, and I quickly learned not to because any attempt at trying to even ask how they had come to that conclusion, let alone defend against it, was just dismissed as, oh, all small towns are racists. No source, no anything else, just all small towns must be racist.
Now, I'd ultimately went to two different colleges, and it was bizarre when in one of them it was a small town and the professors were saying this. I don't know if they, like, lived in the area but never socialized with the people of the area, but this claim was insane. Does racism happen? Yeah, everywhere. It's unfortunate. But if you're going to make a claim like that, that small towns are racist, you better, you better have some evidence to back that up that some something government statistics peer reviewed research something to back up that small towns on average I'll even accept a minor little amount say 51% to 49% to back up that that's the case I'm not going to make the claim that, say, big cities are overrun with, I don't know, hipsters, because I have no evidence for something like that. Are there more hipsters in cities than in the countryside? Yeah, probably, but I don't know. I, I have no idea. That's just a guess, and guesses are wrong a lot of the time. And I think that's all they were ever wind up doing, is guessing, but so sure of themselves that they weren't willing to question their own beliefs, and weren't willing to defend them to other people. Um... Another one that was really irritating is that we must be anti-science or must be anti-evidence. And the single biggest thing that was brought up in regards to that is we must be anti-global warming or anti-climate change. Yeah, because the people who are literally living amongst nature are going to be anti-environment. That makes perfect fucking sense. Perfect sense. Flawless logic. And I think that's basically an extension of the country people must be idiots with an intermixing of political views. But that's just my guess. I don't know what they're thinking. I've literally never been able to even come close to a satisfactory answer for why any of this has happened. Um... Ah, here was a definitely a good one. This was something that I would only encounter in um, the social science social sciences. Uh, really not keen on calling them sciences. Uh, that doesn't mean they're not evidence based practices. Okay, I want to be clear about that. I will not call engineering a science either, because engineering, proper engineering, follows a different method of determining its evidence, because it is different in nature. Uh, an engineer is more concerned with, say, comparing uh, which different approaches are going to be most satisfactory for a given outcome, whereas scientists are more concerned with why a given outcome occurs. Those different things to determine involve a different process. So in no way am I bashing the social sciences, social sciences by doing the whole sarcastic air quote about the sciences. 
I'm not saying they're not evidence-based practices, just that I'm not willing to call them sciences. It's in the same way that I'm, there's total, plenty of things that get called engineering that I'm not okay with being called engineering. That doesn't invalidate them, that just means it's not really the right term for it. Okay. But I, I would see this all too often. Uh, in the social sciences. The narrative... I won't even say the narrative, because it wasn't just one, but narratives about the American Aborigines, the American Indians, the Native Americans, whatever you want to call them, Really, there's no good name for them because there's tons of different tribes, and those tribes really barely had any good common descendant to use. On like, but the, the the claim out of these people it was basically that there was this large scale harmony and that everything was wonderful until the white man came. And any attempt to question that meant you were a racist. Where I live, is literally one town over from the Ganyakehaga Reservation of Akwazasne. The Mohawks. Their name for themselves is Ganyakehaga, but you'd never hear that in college. It was always the Mohawks. Just like it was always the Iroquois, not the Haudenosaunee. Among these people, mind you, most of them have assimilated the word as uh, sort of own it and it doesn't become racist anymore, but uh, the exact origins of Iroquois are Slightly debated, the two two of the more common theories uh, about the origins of the word are either from a French slur or an Algonquin slur. Either way, it's it's a slur, and it's not the best way to refer to these people. Definitely not a respectful way to refer to these people. Now, I'm not about to get all social justice warrior on the professor's asses. Hopefully they didn't know better. I'm not going to freak out. You know, maybe uh, wind up writing a paper just all use Haudenosaunee and Ganyakehaga throughout the entire thing. But, you know, I grew up around these people to the extent that I was actually adopted into a Ganyakehaga family. My grandpa is one of the few people uh, an estimated, like, 2,100 of them remaining that can actually speak the language fluently. Use Mohawk and Iroquois all the time, so I'm definitely not going to get butthurt about it. Especially not on their behalf. If they're not going to get butthurt about it, I have no business getting butthurt about it. But it was just sort of interesting noticing that. But, yeah, back to what I was saying, they, if you dared question that narrative at all, you were racist. Because everything was fine and dandy until the white people came along. Paying almost no attention to the large-scale clashes that occurred between them. You may have 
put two and two together when I mentioned the possibility of Iroquois being an Algonquin slur. The various Haudenosaunee tribes and the Algonquin tribes really did not get along together. And you saw that manifest with the Seven Years' War over here, mostly known as the French and Indian War. The French with the Algonquin versus some of the Americans with the Haudenosaunee. And it's, it's much more than that, but unlike these people, I'm not willing to comment on the interactions and political issues between other tribes that I really would know nothing about, not appropriately in any way. But it didn't stop there. No, the, uh, I wound up going to the call, this, uh, the, the, the first college I went to when I first encountered this, I wound up going with, um, one of my classmates who was Kanyakehaga, Mohawk. And I watched her get called a racist for challenging this belief. And it's absurd. It's obviously absurd because if you break it down to simple form, you have a white professor telling a Kanyakehaga girl that she is a white supremacist for trying to explain that her people did not get along with others. What? What? That's, that's fucking retarded. It's fucking retarded. Uh, finish this up. I guess next time I'll get into uh, reiterate on how I was originally getting into psychology and talk about my journey through that and what I uh, shifted away from that. Why I shifted away from that. Um, I think for the most part we've covered enough of the prejudices that I encountered there that I never encountered anywhere else. Um, that's not it for the social stuff. I'll do another one on some uh, different aspect of the social stuff. But this one, um, we've basically covered the different prejudices I experienced there that uh, t t totally, totally... Um, odd 